five albums I have never shown before. Hi everybody and welcome to this video and um, this is something a little bit different because it's the first one of these I've done This is a competition entry for somebody else's channel so Some of my regulars might not be aware there's this thing called the vinyl community or the VC and Basically, it's a group of people all around the world who collect vinyl and make videos about their purchases Etc similar to what I do here, but specifically most of them just vinyl some of them cover CDs as well, but predominantly, as I say, vinyl. They also, some of them also do cassettes and mini discs and things like that. Um, but yes, uh, I tag any vinyl videos I do on here as part of a vinyl community, but because my channel is broader than that, I don't consider myself purely a vinyl community member, if that makes sense. But I watch a few, there's a few I subscribe to, members of the vinyl community, and one of those is a guy called Rob Walker. His channel is called Rob Walker Let The Music Play. He's only been going a few months, but he's really good content. He's from, well, he's from Oldham and he lives just outside Manchester. I think I'm correct there, Rob. Uh, but he's really knowledgeable about music. He speaks about it well, if that, again, if that makes sense. Uh, he's got a nice diverse taste in music. And he's a really nice guy, we've chatted a few times, he comments on lots of my videos, I've commented on some of his. And yes, so to celebrate his 100, first 100 subscribers, he's running a little competition. And all he wanted us to do was show five albums on vinyl that we haven't shown yet. Uh, this launched a couple of weeks ago, at that point I didn't have five that I haven't shown, but I went shopping yesterday, so now I have. So, here we go. So first up is an album I never expected to be getting, but as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted it. And this is The Circle and the Square by Redbox. I really liked Redbox in, when was it, 86? I bought for America on 7 inch. It's up in the loft somewhere in my bag full of childhood 7 inches that I can't find. But as soon as I do, I will be showing. But yes, I was in the record shop yesterday, and as I say, as soon as I saw this, I knew I had to buy it. And nice gatefold package, full lyrics and everything. So the big hits were um, For America and Lean On Me, which I'm sure you would all know. But yeah, I really liked them at the time, so I'm looking forward to listening to the full album. And it's on Weir, which is an imprint of Warner Brothers. So yeah, as I say, looking forward to giving that a listen. They have just reformed and are releasing a new album very soon, uh, which I shall probably, which is having signed copies on CD on their website. So excuse me. <coughs> oh dear. <coughs> yeah, they're selling signed copies on CD through their website. So I shall probably pick one of those up. It's, I heard the, the first single from it, and as it was playing, I thought, oh, that sounds like Red Box, but it can't be. And then, turns out it was, because I think it's 19 years since they split, or something like that. So yeah, that's the first one. Second one is Like a Prayer by Madonna. I'm not a huge Madonna fan. I've got her greatest hits. I've got music on CD, and I've got this on CD. But this is far and away from what I've certainly of those that I've heard, my favourite Madonna album, and it has got her duet with Prince, Love Song, on it. And also, although he's not credited, he does play on some of the other tracks. Uh, he plays guitar on Like A Prayer, and I can't remember what else. There's another track that he's on as well. Yeah. So I knew if Kieran had this uh, slice of vinyl, but I would buy it, and sure enough he did, so I did. So this is on Sire. But it's such a good album, I mean, Like A Prayer, the, the title track. 
probably Madonna's best song in my opinion. And then it's also got Express Yourself, Promise to Try, Cherish, Dear Jesse, Oh Father, Keep It Together, all really good. Oh, I think Act of Contrition is the other track that Prince plays on. And so the duet is love song. It's not, a, to be honest, it's not a track I actually particularly like, which is unfortunate given the pairing, but you know, it's, it's, I can listen to it and appreciate it, but it's not one I think, wow, that's great. Next, as you probably all know, I love my comedy and particularly I love Monty Python. And this, I had to pick up this compilation. This is Monty Python's Instant Record Collection. And if only for the sleeve, I had to get this. So the idea is it folds out do this properly. There we go. Ooh. So it's as if it is. A full record collection. But they're all fake spines. So give some examples. There's the Beatles Chauffeurs Live. Together again, Frank and Ifield. Ron Simon and Jeff Garfunkel, live from a tennis club, Pearly. Uh, the, <laughs> the best bits of Rolf Harris, that's taken on a new meaning. Monty Python's best sketches beginning with R. Uh, I've got a beer glass sticking in my head and other rugby songs. Accountants work songs. Bang goes boing, back is bing. Bong bang, <laughs> bong bangy bing. Boeing, Boeing, cast album, all sorts. Anyway, uh, and then typical Python sleeve notes. And it, as I say, it's a compilation, so it's just all sorts of bits from all their previous albums. And the record comes tucked in the front. And it's on Charisma. So it's the subtitle of this is the pick of the best of some recently repeated Python hits again, volume two. There isn't a volume one, as you would expect from Python. But yeah, so although I have all this other material elsewhere, I've got a feeling there might be a couple of new linking material bits on here. I might be misremembering. But yeah, just for the box alone, <laughs> or the, the packaging alone, it's worth it. What was that, eight pounds to pay for that? Yeah. It's going to be ages to get that back in. Okay, on a related note, I also picked up the Ruttles soundtrack album. So the Ruttles was after Python, Eric Idle had his own TV show called Rutland Weekend Television. And one of the strands on that was about the Ruttles, who were basically the Beatles in a parallel world. And that turned into a... Uh, he went and presented Saturday Night Live and the Ruttles appeared on that and that sort of span off into a I think it was a TV movie uh, called All You Need Is Cash I think that was the first one he then did do a sequel to it years later but I can't remember I might be getting the title wrong way around on that but yes so then all the music is done by Neil Innes who was of course a big solo star, well not big solo star, but a solo performer in his own right and worked a lot with the Pythons. Um, so Eric doesn't actually appear vocally but he's done all the sleeve notes and everything and this is a really nice package so you can see the front cover are their takes on various Beatles albums and then the back is stills from the film And then, that's a really extensive sleeve notes. This is the start of a booklet.
Hope you can see these. I'm sure you can. But they're really good. They're not direct parodies of Beatles songs. I mean, they, they, well, they sort of are, but they're more. Oh, that's come out now. Okay. Um, been a bit of glue on that, and that seems to have come unstuck now. It was fine yesterday. But they're more songs, sort of in the style of the Beatles. But in the past, some of the tracks have been passed off on bootlegs as being actual Beatles songs. And then you've got interviews with Mick Jagger and Paul Simon on the back there. I think they are genuinely their answers, if you see what I mean, because Eric was friends with them both. And then the album itself. Again, some parody albums on the inner sleeve. And then lyrics and credits on there. And this is on Warner Brothers. Yeah, so uh, thinking about it, they are really, you know, each one is sort of inspired by a particular Beatles song. But then that is not just a case of, you know, changing the words to exactly the same tune. They are, as I say, done in the style of, rather than direct rip-off, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's the fourth one and the fifth one. And of course, there's going to be some prints in here. This is Graffiti Bridge, the soundtrack. Uh, one of the reasons I'm showing you this is that I think this is a hugely underrated Prince album. So Graffiti Bridge was the sequel to Purple Rain, released in 1990-ish, because it had different releases in different parts of the world. I don't think it came out over here till 91. Uh, and the album was... Nine. Yeah, the album was 90. Um, yeah. One of the reasons I think this album's been overlooked a bit is because it is a true soundtrack in as much as it's not just Prince's songs on here, it's the songs by The Time, Mavis Staples, George Clinton, uh, Tevin Campbell, that's everybody isn't it? Yes, um, on here as well, which is what some people argue Purple Rain, the re-release should have been, it should have included. The Time Songs and um, Apollonia Sixes and Des Dickinson and the Modern Airs track. But yeah, going back to this, the only real decently performing single from it was Thieves in the Temple, which is a wonderful song. Uh, New Power Generation was also released as a single, didn't do much. And um, that was it, wasn't it? Yes, that's it. Um, Prince Wise, I believe. Round and Round by Tevin Campbell was also released as a single, I think. And I'm sure one of the time tracks was, but I don't know which one. But yeah, so this comes, it's double album, but in a, a non-gatefold sleeve. And the two inner sleeves, that is the Graffiti Bridge. Various stills. And then... Nice shots for disc two. And also, no, I didn't. And then on Pacey, is it on Pacey Park or is it on Warner's? Because it's, no, it's on Pacey Park, which is a subprint of Warner's anyway. But this soundtrack plus Parade and Purple Rain and Batman, because they're film soundtracks. They're not covered on the Sony's Legacies re-release plan. Warner's retain the rights to them. So as they're gradually re-releasing everything, these won't be included. Hopefully Warner's will do their own thing with them. But yeah, as I say, I think it's hugely underrated. Uh, the opening track, Can't Stop This Feeling I Got, I really like. New Power Generation's a good track, but it's not, it's not a wow track. 
Uh, the Times release it is very good. The Question of You is a brilliant blue song. Elephants and Flowers I really like. Uh, Round and Round by Tevin Campbell's a good fun pop song. Uh, we Can Funk, which is a duet with George Clinton and Prince, is amazing. Although the earlier versions from the mid 80s are better, um, including We Can Fuck, which is on the Purple Rain Deluxe Edition. Uh, and then you've got Joy and Repetition, which is one of the greatest Prince songs ever written, which therefore makes it one of the best songs ever written ever, in my opinion. Uh, Love Machine, which is the time. That's an excellent fun song. Tick Tick Bang I really like. Time Shake is probably the worst of their tracks on here, but it's still good. Uh, Fees and the Temple, which I've already spoken about. Uh, Latest Fashion, which is a duet between Time and Prince, which I really, really like. Melody Cool by Mavis Staples is really good. Uh, Still Would Stand All Time is an excellent gospel ballad. The title track of Feety Bridge, one of Prince's worst songs, unfortunately. And then there's a re reprise, or reprise, however you want to say it, of New Power Generation to end it. Uh, quite a few of Prince's songs on here are old songs that he sort of dusted off and redid. Uh, Still Would Stand All Time dates from about 87. As I say, We Can Funk, I think, was first recorded 83, 84 time. Uh, Tick Tick Bang was 82, I think, rings a bell. I think they're the only ones that were sort of old tracks, as I say, dusted off. But yeah, I just think that's a, it's an underrated Prince album. It's really good fun. The film, if you're not a fan, don't watch it, basically, I would say. Um, the music performances are good, but the plot is shit. So, yep, yeah, um, congratulations, Rob, on your 100 subscribers. I'm sure you're way above that now. Uh, you're probably going to overtake me soon, I would have thought, if you haven't already. But yeah, those of you who are interested in music and particularly vinyl, but although he show, like that, he shows off the vinyl, it isn't so much about the vinyl, it's about the music with Rob, which is what I really like. Um, I do encourage you to check out his channel, I'll put a link in the comments below. Um, but yes, once again, congratulations Rob, thanks for all the good work, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more and continuing our uh, comment conversations. And to everybody else, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you on another video. Bye.